Hey there, it's Laurence Bradford from Learn to Code with Me, and I'm continuing my intro to CSS uh, videos. Okay, so as I said at the end of the last video, this time we're going to talk about cascading. And if you recall, CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. So I just put the, uh, a quick definition of cascading here. I kind of like the second one. I mean, I like the first because it talks about water, but the second says, a process whereby something, typically information or knowledge, is su successively passed on. And that is exactly what's happening in these style sheets. So this was an example I created trying to demonstrate the cascading nature of style sheets. But I think one of the best ways would be to do this here in the CSS. Okay, so we have the paragraph to find what is color green here. Okay, now let's, let's get in here. Okay, now let's give this paragraph a class of uh, red. All right, now let's switch. This is the, the site, remember? Let's refresh. Oh, I took out, uh, earlier I took out the yellow background because it was a little hard to look at. Okay, so as you can see, nothing happened. Uh, it's still, you know, no colors were changed. There's no red anywhere. Because all we did, where was I? Oh, put the class in a red. Okay. So now here I'm going to add. Now remember in the CSS, to call a class, you have to use a period. Red. Okay, and let's do color. Red. Okay. So I mentioned this last time. The reason why these have not changed is because it's, not technically a paragraph, it's in a list, but this is in a paragraph and see that color changed to red. I apologize if you hear a dog barking. The neighbor's dog is like going crazy right now for some reason. It's Hopefully you don't hear it, but it's annoying me. Okay, so that was one example. Let me see here. Okay, so another I, oh, I didn't even set the font family. Okay, let's do that. So font family Helvetica. Is that? Oh, it's putting parentheses. Okay. And then let's set another class. Uh, we'll do times. Okay. We'll do font family times. I think that should work. Well, we'll find out. All right. So let's go back here. Okay, you can see this carried over the Helvetica to the, all the P tags. That's why that hasn't changed, including that. But now let's add a dot times class somewhere. Let's see. To a P somewhere here. Okay. Class equals times. Let's see if that does anything, which Okay, and it did. As you can see now, that turned that the, the font there to Times New Roman. So basically, let's get back. I kind of want to go back to the slide for this. So this takes the you know the original P styling, but then because it has this like added class or ID to it, when it's included. Uh, whether you know it's a P or whether it's a heading or what have you when it has that class or it has that ID it takes on the styling from that you know said class or ID so that's you know it, you know this is actually a good thing I know maybe it sounds a little confusing but that this means that you can have you know on your entire website say you want the font everywhere to be 16 pixels for your paragraph but then you get to a certain part of your website and you actually just want that one page maybe it's your about page or something 
and you know, you're doing a cool effect and you want it to be bigger, you want it to be 20 pixels, you can target with classes or with IDs that one page and set the font size differently for the paragraph and it won't affect anything else. So that, let's go back to the definition. That, you know, that's kind of how it relates to where the information is being passed successively. So I want to do, I want to show you another example. So see how I have P here, color green, okay? I'm going to add one down here. P color blue. Can you guess which color the paragraph is going to be? There's there's two, right? There's green and there's blue then. Let's find out. Blue, right? The reason being this falls further down in the style sheet than this. So because of the, the way it's ordered, it picks up this. It's the last to go in and it kind of starts from top to bottom. So when you reset something later on, it picks up this styling. However, you really shouldn't have like two P tags like this. You should really like if you wanted everything to be blue, you should just go back here and you know put blue. But just to show you what I mean. That that beeping is my pizza. Hold on. BRB. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Obviously, my pizza is like really important. <laughs> okay, so I think I was talking about how yeah, it goes it goes in the order and the information is passed down and I yeah, I, I showed you how it went from green and then blue because this um, declaration was written later on in the document and it picks up that that takes precedence it kind of like rewrites think of it that way. It, it rewrites the initial P color green okay cool so now I just want to mention uh, the cascading order and yeah the last one has the highest priority so there's the browser default which is like the least priority. And I mentioned, I mentioned that before, our, how like our web browser, our web browsers, Chrome, Microsoft, Safari, Opera, and so on, they all have these uh, preset um, fonts and styles. And actually in Chrome, the other day, I discovered, now I don't know how I got to this. It was under settings. I don't know where it was. I don't feel like finding it right now. But you can actually set your default, your default font, in in things like that, and like font size and all this stuff in the uh, in the browser. Anyway, so browser default least important. Okay, second, the external style sheet. So exactly what we've been writing here, the style.css sheet that you remember links right here, links to the HTML, okay? And then uh, after that, the internal style sheet, so in the head section, that would be if we put, instead of this, we did two tags like this, style, style, and then written, and then uh, wrote the CSS inside there, kind of how Tumblr does it. So that takes what the third most importance and then the fourth so the most important or the highest priority would be the inline style so basically just what this is saying and if you don't use which you shouldn't be using um three or you know number three number four but say if you did say if you have a site and then you're writing like the html the css is already done and you want to change something to black and you do an inline style of color black for the font say if everything else is blue when you specify that, that'll overwrite the external style sheet or even the internal style sheet. So I hope that makes sense to everyone. Okay, and before I wrap up, I just wanted to just talk about a little bit more about the CSS properties. And we already talked about a few, like font family, that's like, you know, like the what kind of font it is, like Arial, Times, Comic Sans, right? <laughs> And we also, you know, I think aside from width and height, we talked about, or you've probably seen all of these so far in this video series, but a lot of these CSS properties have self-explanatory names, which is a good thing, so it's easy for us to remember. The only thing, and I still get mixed up with this sometimes, is color, because, you know, it should almost, you, should, you think it should be font color, but 
just the word color means the font color or the color of the text. Okay, so I'm going to, let me see, next time we're going to get into inline versus block elements. So this is going to be incorporating more HTML, more advanced HTML. So thank you for watching and have a great rest of the day.